Tell me about April 19th, 2013, what happened? That was the day I was told that um, my life might be cut short. And also that is the day that my life got uh, awarded to me uh, by the Lord. Um, so how did that work? What, what were the, you went to go to the doctor. I did. And what were they telling you? Yeah, so it was actually a second appointment to confirm the first appointment because um, I received a diagnosis of breast cancer, except that it was a very, not a very typical breast cancer. It was called um, squamous, uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the breast. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was told it was extremely rare. And so the oncologist that was in Vancouver, BC, at the time I lived there, said, you know what, I'd like a second opinion. Can you come back on the 19th of April to speak with another oncologist? And the doctor came in the room. Um, I just remember three words. She said, it's cancer, it's cancer, it's cancer, three times. And it wasn't just cancer, it was a very aggressive form of cancer. That's it was right. Very dangerous. It was, it was actually very rare and um, stage three already. Wow. Um, I understand it was considered more of a skin cancer in the breast. Um, they had to do a case conference. It, it was something that is... Um, Un unusual. Uh, very unusual. So you're young and you're thinking to, to yourself, you must be thinking like, how is this, how is this my life going to be moving forward? Mm. Could this be fatal? Were you asking those big questions? I think at the moment I was in some sort of a f phase uh, or fog, really. All I heard is it's cancer and then some, you know, mumbling words about chemo, surgery. I was given a choice uh, in that appointment. You know, you can, it was a Friday. Um, you can uh, d decide to start chemotherapy on the Monday or a mastectomy on the Monday. Which one would you want? Wow. I honestly didn't even comprehend those words. I was living far away from my family. I mean, um, when the doctor left the room, that's when I made the best decision of my life, which is to give my life to Yeshua, to Jesus. Yeah, so now, you see Yeshua, you come from a Jewish background, so yes. crying out to Jesus would kind of be the last thing right. you know, that, that somebody from your background would do. That would be That's a very um, radical thing to do. So why, right. why Yeshua? Yes, so uh, that's true. I grew up in Israel. I moved to Canada when I was about 19 years old. Uh, we speak Hebrew at home with my parents, my brothers. Um, I was always a very spiritual kid. Uh, you know, I always had these philosophical questions like, are we alone in the world or who is God? And living in Israel, what I saw from a child's perspective is either you are orthodox and behave in a way that I didn't, seem that would fit me, uh, very limited, cons constructive, constructed, um, or you're secular. And so we were actually secular, except we celebrated Jewish holidays. But growing up and moving to BC, being surrounded by nature, my spiritual uh, thirst was just so deep. And I knew that I did not want uh, what I thought the world defined God. So I went into New Age, I went into all kinds of different uh, healing modalities. I've had many students that I unfortunately misle misled because I didn't know better, um, taught workshops, etc., cetera, on, on, on spirituality. But all along, I was looking for something to fill a hole in my heart. And that something is God. So, and so, so some of the things, <clears throat> different religions, different um, ways of connecting to, to your spiritual life that you mm -hmm. tried, you didn't go to any of those in that moment when you thought mm -hmm. your life might be in danger. No, I really at the time did not feel that my traditional Jewish um, upbringing or uh, religion would satisfy what I needed. Uh, but I knew there was a God, I just didn't know Him. Thankfully, he knew me. And you'd had a dream about Jesus. Tell me about that. I actually had a vision um, two years prior to the diagnosis. Well, what happened is um, being in New Age, I was starting to communicate, you know, God, who are you? Um, oh, Jesus. I've, I've heard the word Jesus and Christ, and, but thought, no, I'm not, I'm not supposed to look into it. I'm Jewish. But I was just so curious about something that I wasn't supposed to know about. And I remember saying out loud, um, you know, God, if, if this Jesus is real, 
you know, show me. Um, and what happened is actually in 2011, uh, it was March 2011, I was in my bedroom, um, not sleeping, and I saw him. I had a, an open eye vision of, of the Jewish Jesus. I mean, he looked very Jewish to me. He appeared to me. He was a, Jewish. Uh, correct. <laughs> he is the Jewish Messiah. He is the savior of the world. But, but you know, the God in his brilliant uh, way of doing things appeared to me in a way that I would not find threatening. So he appeared with a, with a talit, with a uh, prayer That's shawl. Tall and those traditional sandals that we read about. And I remember he opened his arms like that and I could see the, the talit, the prayer shawl going in. And he had said, come to me. And his eyes were just love. Um, it must have been a split second, but it felt like eternity. Wow. And that was two years before the diagnosis. Okay, we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to find out what happened when she cried out to, to Jesus as a Jew. And also, uh, the, her treatments were so radical prescribed by the doctors. What happened with her cancer in just a moment? As a child fears the dark, we often fear what we can't see. The Bible reminds us 365 times not to fear because God wants us to put our trust in Him. If you would like to see your way out of the dark, call our 24-7 prayer lines at 1-866-273-4444 or visit crossroads.ca slash 24-7 prayer. Anytime, anywhere, we're here for you. 100 Huntley Street presents First People's Voices, compelling stories of faith and resiliency from Indigenous communities across Canada. Thursdays at 8 on YES TV. We are back with Shiri Joshua, whose aggressive breast cancer diagnosis changed the course of her life. Now, we left you in a cancer clinic, just being told you had stage three aggressive breast cancer. Mm -hmm. You fell to your knees and you cried out to Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, which was very unusual for you with your background. Yeah. What happened when you did that? Uh, well, as soon as the doctor left the room and gave me the two choices uh, for the following 48 hours, um, I literally, yes, I fell to, uh, to my knees on the, on the floor of the uh, BC Cancer Clinic. And I just said, Lord, um, I'm tired of fighting you. If, if I have to die, I die, but I want to come to you. But if you allow me to live, I will give my life to you. And even though I was in a bit of a daze as to what's happening or what I was just being told, uh, a wave of peace came upon me. I think it was just the non-fighting because I wanted him so much, but I was too afraid, being Jewish, to, to accept somebody by the name Jesus. But really, his name is Yeshua. <laughs> it's okay to believe in him. You know. So you had this incredible peace come over you. You've given up fighting this anymore. Yes. Um, but you have to walk some tough, some tough roads ahead. That's right. Some very aggressive treatment. Talk to me about how this like, baby new faith mm. um, walked you through some of those tough moments. Yes. Well, thankfully, somebody came to the house that night. A friend insisted of bringing a, a, a pastor. Didn't know anything. He led me through the prayer of accepting uh, the Lord. <clears throat> um, I moved back to Toronto to be with my family to start treatment. Um, literally within a week, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in um, surgery. Uh, I did a mastectomy. I went to Sunnybrook Hospital. They did say there's no time to even think. Um, we're doing the surgery and then you're up for chemo. So I did uh, uh, the mastectomy and then six rounds of chemotherapy it took six months. Um, yeah, and so how, like, how, are you, how are you relying on your faith at this point? Or how was it impacting yeah. these hard circumstances? It was interesting because I moved into my parents' house as an adult, and I was the only believer. I was a secret believer. I didn't want to offend my parents with my new faith. Um, but all I had is, is Him. All I had is, is Yeshua, is the Lord. And just, I just said, 
God, whatever happens, happens. This life is yours. Um, you know, is there anybody else like me? And then he gave me a congregation full of people like me. And, you know, my mom was my nurse, my, my angel. My, she took care of me like a baby. And eventually I did share with my parents my faith. And they have been very happy for me. And uh, I'm alive to tell. We have 30 seconds left, but I'm thinking of somebody watching right now who may be facing an unexpected diagnosis, mm. um, maybe not, not knowing how to rely on faith or how to find God. Can you talk, to, do you have some encouragement for them? Yes, well, grab a scripture and stand on it. Uh, the Lord has given me a number of scriptures. Uh, I did not die but live to declare the work of the Lord. Uh, this morning I read Isaiah 43, 7. Uh, Those of us who are called by His name, He had made for His glory. So if God made us for His glory, He did not plan for us to have cancer. This is not God's plan. So cancer, you're out in yeah. Jesus' name. And this is seven years later and you are cancer free. Amen. I am. I'm cured. So yes. good. Thank you so much for coming today to share your story. Thank you very much.